Take a road up to the mountain or down to the desert floor. Drive in, yeah. This is Sarah. And this is Carolyn. You're watching Driving, Driving America, America for, for Better, Better Roads. Roads. Hey, this is Blair Barnhart, and you're watching the final part, part three that is, of episode three, Driving America for Better Roads. So glad you could join us. You know, this entire series, uh, thanks again to everybody, Debbie and Debbie and Howard and Tina, and uh, the list goes on and on. I can't thank you guys enough, Patrick, Ronnie, for getting me pointed in the right direction here. It's not often that I had that much help getting to the next tour stop. And it's just amazing, amazing journey here, watching the evolution of Stonehenge, Mary Hill, Washington. You know, we were up at the top of Chanticleer Point, this is all a vision of Samuel Hill. What an ingenious engineer. Came into Mary Hill, built the town, built 10 miles of experimental, experimental road that ended up becoming a historical Highway 30. What an amazing, amazing testament to one man's vision. Well, you know, as you've watched the, uh, if you've sat around and, and watched any of the uh, talk that I did here from Northwest Pavement Management Association. You know, we got the board of advisors together, the advisory board with IPMA, headed up by Imelda Diaz, a chair. If you look at the website, ipma.co, we have some of the smartest, most ingenious people backing IPMA. And it's my hope that we grow a circle of like-minded pavement management professionals that go on to get APM, Accredited Pavement Manager designation. And if, if there's one thing um, that makes me happy, it's watching agencies just like you save millions and millions of dollars. So let me just walk through, and you know, you've watched enough of these videos and I can go ahead and tell you right now that I've got 30 episodes to give you guys and there's no pitch um, I'm not here to sell our services or make you do anything you don't want to do I'm gonna give you 30 episodes of free content and use it and save money hopefully y'all could just take that information and, and right out of the gate without even signing up for Ritma Academy you probably save 10 or 15 million as a as a circle of pavement managers but if you decide to go on and pursue your APM designation, Accredited Payment Manager, what that will mean to us at IPMA is that you've taken 50 or 60 hours of the most comprehensive online training there is and there ever will be likely for pavement managers in place asphalt recycling, pavement preservation, distress evaluation, and you have APM designation after your name so that you can go on and give it that information and pass it on to all of your staff. Uh, everyone you meet in the elevator, just let them know. We don't have to have crumbling roads here in America. So just a quick checklist before we go on here to part three, IPMA Academy. Uh, you know, we've got the 60 hours of online training.
in any case. Twitter, you can follow us at IPMA TV or IPMA Academy, IPMA Forum. You know, it's my hope that we grow a circle of pavement managers and we're here to serve you guys and, and give you all the information that we've got. But guess what? Here's what I've learned in my 17 years of teaching and 30 years of construction experience. I've learned that every single day when I go out, I learn from people just like you. So if we have a forum in place, certainly we'll be able to spread that information throughout our circle of pavement managers. Now the IPMA bid share, let me tell you guys, contractors, consultants, uh, equipment manufacturers, on December 1st, every single agency person that is an IPMA insider, that's registered with IPMA.co as an IPMA insider, will get a annual membership at no charge. Now, what does that mean to you? You're gonna get insider tips, you're gonna get IPMA member spotlights from some of the supplier or the equipment manufacturers. You'll see short videos on their equipment and you know really educational there's no pitches I, I I'm not one to pitch stuff if if something's important in the industry and you need to know about it I'm gonna get out there crawl around in the equipment and get video footage for you I think you know that by now uh, so IPMA bid share we'll give you Debbie Audrey uh, Charlie Ronnie the opportunity to take your bid documents anything pertaining to pavement management asphalt recycling or pavement preservation take those PDF files and load them up. Ben will actually, uh, our internet genius, will have a little video clip for you showing you how to load the documents up. It's uh, no charge. You go ahead and load the documents up and all you supplier, equipment manufacturer, contractor members will be able to search the IPMA bid share database and find a job specifically for you. Now, what does that mean to you as the IPMA agency member, the insider that you are? Not only do you have a certificate hanging on your wall with your name on it, that you're a member of ITMA, but you will get, bar none, the most cost-effective pricing because wherever I go out and teach anywhere in America, uh, whether it's a workshop, a lunch and learn for APWA, whatever, it could be a, a, the 12 or 15 or two day session, whenever I'm out teaching, I'm forever finding people that have no idea about the newest innovations in recycling, preservation, and pavement distress evaluation. They're always asking me, Blair, who should we get to bid on this? Well, guess what? You don't have to worry anymore because as soon as you post the bid document on IPMA bid share, the whole world will see it. Every IPMA member will be able to come on there and search the database for their key terms, such as uh, automated pavement evaluation, uh, PCI, um, foamed asphalt, cement stabilized base, you know, microservicing, whatever. Search the database, find those documents, download them and bid on the job. Uh, now, the IPMA insiders will be able to do this. On IPMA TV, we're always going to have the videos posted. I'm going to have about 30 sessions here, Driving America for Better Roads. And I've got them coming at you from all different great locations, including Stonehenge. Um, Today, however, is more of a, uh, the first five videos on Driving America for Better Roads are really gonna be a solid platform before we lunge into the instructional part of it and I start sharing my uh, years of experience with you along with all the stuff that I've learned from other people. So we're here to serve this community of pavement managers, ipma.co, hope you can join us. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead and like us. Uh, put comments in there. You know, what I'd like to hear back from the agency engineers is, well, and suppliers too, contractors, anybody that's involved or looking at getting involved with the association, we want to hear from you because I like the live conference atmosphere, don't get me wrong, but costs are prohibitive. A lot of people can't travel now with agencies. And one thing for certain is the, the um, bootstraps are on and it's like most people can't even afford to spend $25 on a webinar anymore. So what I would like to hear from you, the uh, IPMA members, is should we have a live conference once a year or should we just do things online and maybe have a one or two day training session where we bring in experts from all over the world on pavement management and have that as a recording that you guys can listen to later if you can't make it or uh, have it live so you can tune in live and actually ask the instructors questions along the way. 
as opposed to going to a live conference event where you have to get in a plane and fly somewhere. So could you please let us know about that? Let's go into part three. Watch the rest of this video, uh, me doing my rant from Northwest Pavement Management Association. Thanks again, everybody over there in Vancouver. That was an amazing, amazing conference. Really enjoyed myself, as you can see probably from the videos. So let's get in and watch the rest of part three. The next episode I'm gonna bring your way will be the Christmas giving episode, um, season's greetings, and um, then I'm gonna take you around Coeur d'Alene Golf Course and show you a little bit about the background that I have, and at the same time you get a chance to see an amazing golf course. And then we'll get on into all of the instructional videos, and they'll be a lot shorter. So thanks for joining us. I didn't bring the calendar with me, but you know what? I picked 1956 for a reason because today is uh, what, October 25th? Is it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday? Thursday the 25th. Okay, if you go to the calendar 1956, uh, Thursday is the exact same calendar day. Is it 26th today? 25th. Okay, right, so 25th, uh, Thursday, October 2012. 1956 and 2040 are exactly the same. And uh, guess what? 2040, we're headed for three trillion dollars of backlog of deficit rows. Three trillion in debt. We're spending 57. Per you guys want to know why you're underfunded? Steve Miller, are you here? And is Bush here? I promise I wouldn't bash anyone, right? Well, guess what? You're underfunded because we're spending 57 percent of our gross domestic uh, income on. 1.8% of our roads. That's a little rant that I did in the University of Kansas program. It's on YouTube. So that's like a two-hour lecture. Hamilton Project says that uh, our grandchildren won't be able to go to McDonald's. That's how bad, that's where we're headed right now. So back then, you used to use this to take pictures. Cody, you got the camera back there. You got the, there's an iPhone, right? So now I can take movies and pictures with this. This is what I used in 56. Then, I got a call for you coming in right here. Paul? Hello? Anyone there? Yeah, I'll be right with you, okay? Uh, one day we'll have cell phones, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so now, I walk around with this. Can everyone see that? That's a, uh, it's a something, an, an Apple product. God knows I have every single one of them. They've sucked me in ever since I got Final Cut Pro. But uh, that is a two gigabyte shuffle. I take this to the golf course with me when I golf. Seems like the last time I golfed was you and I about eight years ago. <laughs> so technology has improved across the board on everything, right? This is my point, I do have a point here. Except for one thing. You know what that is? Animals. Our roads. But we keep fixing them the same way, right? I 17,000 miles in six weeks, what do you think I've seen? Interstates, right? <laughs> Mail it off, 200 million year old rocks, haul it 50 miles back to the plant. That makes a lot of sense. We make 600 million tons of asphalt every year and we recycle 100 million tons. And yes, everyone was right. It is the number one recycled product in America, but we only recycle in place about 3% of our infrastructure. And only 10% of people understand what pavement preservation is. So a huge disconnect. And what is our most valuable infrastructure at the local agency level? Our roads, right? So every time I have a client with our consulting firm and I go back and they say, Blair, can you come and talk to the city council? Can you come and talk to the commission? Guess what I say? Well, the good news is, is now we know the, uh, the actual PCI rating of every single road in your agency. We know how to fix it. The bad news is, is that you need three million a year and you're only going to spend 300,000 a year. So I'm going to watch your PCI decline and your backlog go up. And you need to go back to your elected officials and try to get more revenue coming in for you and not the baseball field or the football field or the library. So I feel your pain. And by the way, I was involved with the largest privatized city in America, City of Sandy Springs, as a contractor I had my own public works crew of 21 people. And it was hell every day, I'm not gonna lie to you. So I understand what you're going through. And it can't be fun. Because you're, you're said, 
all you all you are empowered to go back to your agency tomorrow or Monday and take care of 300 or 500 or 1800 miles of road and you only have a tenth of the amount of money that you need to take care of them so that drop of quiet is this is this am I getting too deep so 200 million year old rocks in the quarry do you think they know any different when they're sitting on your road no in fact, there's no reason, there's no earthly reason why you don't have in-place asphalt recycling contractors come into your location and recycle it in place. It's usually 30% less money. It's usually about 50 to 60% more echo efficient. And it usually takes about a tenth of the amount of time. And people ask me, I've been teaching this for 17 years, and people say, Blair, why doesn't everybody in America do this? I don't know, it's the biggest no-brainer I've ever seen. It's not hard, it was hard to learn guitar and learn how to play golf. Managing our infrastructure is easy. You just have to stop mining aggregate and start thinking about doing it in place. Well, guess, you know what? I learned this like in 1995, 96. Okay, I, I, I answered a blind ad in a newspaper. I was bored of what I was doing, so. I just answered an ad and they took me in. I was I was doing like coal mix and salt and de-icing chemicals for agency engineers like yourself. And uh, they took me into this room and said, do you know anything about that for a second? I said, oh yeah. Yeah, no problem, I'll figure that out. And uh, then the next thing you know, I was thrown into this whole world of in-place asphalt recycling, foamed asphalt, expanded asphalt as we called it in Canada. And guess what? I, I saw this in 1995. I knew this was a no-brainer then. And I still know it's a no-brainer, and I tell everybody I know, as many people as I can tell, I tell them, that this is the way to do this. Okay, that's the cold place train. And this is my crew, the, the foam asphalt pulverizing crew, passing the cold place train. This is one of the rarest photographs I've ever taken in this lifetime. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we did producing it for you. Here we are in Stonehenge, Washington. This is Mary Hill, Washington, an exact replica, sorry, an exact replica of Stonehenge that Samuel Hill made back in the 20s for us all to enjoy and as a monument to the soldiers that served in World War I. Thanks for joining us. 
and we'll see you at the next stop here, Driving America for Better Roads. This is Blair Barnhart signing off. Hi, this is Jerry at Stonehenge. I want to thank you for watching Driving America for Better Roads. Gracias por mirar América en América por mejores calles. Take a road up to the mountain or down to the desert floor. Any county road or interstate highway driving America for better Thank you for driving the roads. No, no. <laughs> Thank you for watching Driving America oh. for Better Roads. Okay. You ready? All right. Cardi, do you know what the number one recycled product in America and Canada is? Would it be asphalt? <laughs> 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 what? I don't know what your name is. Like what? Like that.